What up, guys? Today we got a question from Sied who's having what I call the curse of the guard player. So here's what's going on. In his training right now, his sweeps, his submissions, his guard retention, all of his bottom stuff is coming together really nicely. And he's able to attack people and be very uh, offensive off of his back. All that's good, right? But he says that anytime he gets on top of someone, let's say he sweeps them, he can't hold top position to save his life. Like they breathe on him the wrong way, he falls over. They move a little bit and he falls over. And his coaches have told him like, look, man, you've got a good bottom game, but we need to see you develop more of your top game. And I guess they're giving him some instructions on that. But he sends me the message asking the Chewster if I have any advice on the situation and how to improve his ability to hold top position. So brother, thank you for the question. So check this out. I call this the curse of the bottom player because it's like kind of like the opposite of the curse of the wrestler in jiu-jitsu, where you see wrestler and judoka and people that come from these types of sports. When they come into jiu-jitsu, they naturally have that ability for great takedowns, great pinning pressure. They take to passing guard. All of that comes along very easily for them. And so again, they get very comfortable on top. But then getting them to play off their back sometimes is like pulling teeth. They don't want to do it. And sometimes they never get good off playing on their back because they don't want to do it. Well, people that come into jiu-jitsu who naturally gravitate towards the bottom positions, this happens for them sometimes. Where on the, other, on the flip side though, where they develop this beautiful guard game, this very offensive guard game, all that's great. But then when they get on top, they like, if someone just like looks at them, they fall over to their back and go back to what they feel comfortable with. It reminds me of the same situation where you'll go to the weight room sometimes and you'll see that some people tend to favor certain lifts. You know, you'll, you'll see someone that has like this massive upper body tiny little legs, or sometimes the opposite, where they'll have these huge legs and then tiny little upper body, and it's because they tend to favor particular lifts. Maybe they can move more weight on the bench press, because, and that's what the lift that they want to focus on. Or maybe they've just got naturally strong legs and they can squat a house, and so they put all their eggs in that basket. It comes from the same reason that all these things come from, which is we like to play the games we're good at, and we avoid discomfort. Simple as that. And it takes a lot to get you to move towards that discomfort. So that's one thing to chew on. Now here's the deal. As far as instruction goes, like I said, I could give you some instructions in my gym, but your coaches are already doing that, I'm sure. Um, and you sort of gave me a blanket topic, which is top position, and I've got lots of videos on this for top position. But what I think you have to address first, Yed, is your mentality, your mindset in this. Because your message, if, if your internal dialogue is anything like your message to me, you're, there's no, I could give you all the technical instruction. You're not going to hold top position to save your life for, for anything because you've already given up on it before you've even, even started. And again, I know that some people will say this is mental BS, whatever, but I've experienced this. I've gone into training sessions. I remember years ago trying to develop gi chokes. I'm not naturally great with collar chokes and gi chokes, but I wanted to get better with them. I've always been really good with arm chokes, like kimuras and everything else. I've got short arms and uh, they're fairly strong, so I can naturally play those positions. But I wanted to add gi chokes in to add a, another element to my submission game. Well, I remember there was one session where I'm going for a gi choke on something. I'm trying to finish it. But in the back of my head, I remember noticing the inner dialogue talking to me, this little voice. If you've watched my videos long enough, I, I talk about this little voice, the, the, weak, the weakness in you, right? Saying, oh man, you're not gonna finish this. There's no way you're gonna finish this gi choke. You suck with gi chokes, remember? And then noticing that. And I don't know if it was that same session or if it was the next session. They, you know, the, Things get a little fuzzy as I get older, but I shook it off. And I remember going into my role in that day and it's like, okay, I'm going to submit someone with a collar choke. This is what's going on in my head. I don't know who I'm gonna submit, but I'm submitting someone today with a collar choke. And lo and behold, I finished someone with a collar choke. No real technical difference, just a different mentality that it took to that role. And so that, I think that's really important for you because again, if I said Sied, your wife, your kids, your family, your friends, whatever, I don't know, um, are sitting over top of a burning pit. <laughs> I'm just making shit up. Um, but you're gonna lose your family, your friends, whatever, if you do not hold top position, if you do not stay on top for 30 seconds. I bet you'd find a damn way to stay on top for 30 seconds, wouldn't you, Sied, right? But what happens is there's nothing on the line. We're just like, whatever, you just roll over. It's so easy to do. Sometimes you gotta play these mental games with yourself. I know that years ago when I would be tired when I was getting ready for an MMA fight, and I still do this whenever I get ready for a competition, but years ago when I'd be getting ready for an MMA fight, I would be training a ton, and I would be getting very tired by the end of the week during our sparring sessions. And I remember that a lot of times what I would do is I would look at the clock, and if the clock was at one minute, I would always think to myself, okay, it's one minute, it's in the third round, the last minute of the fight, 
the judges scores are really close. I have to get a takedown. I've got to do something significant. Otherwise, there's eight weeks that I've led up to this training camp. It all goes down the drain for nothing. Uh, I don't win the fight. I don't get my hand raised. You know, whatever, insert bad thing happening. I remember I would take a deep breath and I would go. And I've always done that, right? I always look at the clock and, or I'll place these little conditions on myself, especially when I'm trying to push myself. And so what I would encourage you to do is as you're getting the in technical instruction from your coach, you got to change your mindset. And if you notice that your mindset is that you can't hold top position, you have to change that. Now you can play those mental games like, you know, I have to hold this for 30 seconds, you know, to win the tournament or to whatever, you know, you can insert the situation. Maybe you can find something that works for you. But if nothing else, you just have to shake off your shit a little bit and you can't allow yourself to walk into the role with this mentality of I can't hold this position Oh, shucks. You know, I'll play on my back again. You have to get ready to hold that position. And again, it's just, it's a mentality thing, bro. And I've seen this happen with too many, tons of people. It was with me with other positions like playing off of my back. Um, I know years ago when I was playing off my back as a wrestler, I didn't want to be there. And it took a lot of mental focus for me to be comfortable enough to play off that position. So anyway, just a couple ideas to chew on, Sied. Good luck with your training. Talk to you guys next time.